Hey guys, thanks for watching our shows. We are so close to hitting a million subscribers, so please help us get over the top by smashing that subscribe button. And be sure to follow us on Instagram where you can stay up to date on all contests and giveaways. Like the Corvette, you can enter to win right now. And now more tech you can use on Carcass. Today on Carcass, we recreate the rear section of the chassis on our junkyard fine tow truck. How we rebuild this crusty sea channel, giving this tow truck a second chance at life. You're watching Carcass. we picked up this 1977 C30 tow truck in a local junkyard. It was mostly together with a few things missing under the hood and a flat tire out back. We fell in love with this rusty old work truck, and with a little work getting it started, we decided this patinaed moneymaker would be our next project vehicle. When we brought this thing back to the shop, we tore right into it, looking for the problem areas. Yep. And boy, did we run into every car guy's nightmare. Not only did we find cosmetic rust, but we also found some structural rust. Jimmy and I were just glad this thing didn't break in half as we rolled it into the shop. We thought long and hard about what to do with this chassis and we agreed. The rust, it had to go. So we fired up the torch and nixed the rear section of this frame. We made cuts on either side, just behind the cab, dividing the truck in two. Now we have two halves of a truck. We kept the rear half so we can pull a measurement later. And as for the front, if the truck wasn't roadworthy before, it certainly isn't now. The plan is to rebuild the back end of this chassis and that involves us forming new sections of C-channel. The new sections will replace the old sections from about here to here. Everything behind that, we're gonna use four inch tall rectangular tubing and because the tubing is so much shorter than the new channel, we'll have to gusset the tubing to the channel to ensure it's a strong joint. We plan on building the entire back end on a fixturing table to make sure everything is square and true. So the first step in this process is to grab some measurements and bend up our new C-channel. All right, let's see. Seven and three eighths, two and three quarter. To build our C-channel, we're gonna be using 3 16 sheet steel. And if you add up our measurements from the original chassis, you get roughly 13 inches. And we're replacing 30 inches before we transition to the rectangular tubing. We'll connect the dots, giving us a cutting line to follow with the plasma torch. We're gonna use a straight edge to help guide us along this cut. We'll line the tip of our torch up with our cut line and just clamp the straight edge in place. Butting our torch up against the edge of our yardstick, we can begin cutting. After our first cut, We'll reset the straight edge and finish the cut. We'll follow that up with a seven inch grinder to clean up the jagged edges that were left behind by the plasma torch. While Jeremy cuts out another piece for our other piece of C-channel, I'm gonna show you guys how we map out the bends. For our new chassis section, we're gonna be nesting a new piece of C-channel in the existing piece of C-channel on the truck. And to do that, we're gonna to need to know one very specific piece of information. That's the inside radius of the bend that comes off the brake. The reason why we need to know that is because there's a specific amount of material taken up in each bend. And for us to accurately place our bend lines on our flat sheet, we need to know what this radius is. So to figure that out, we need to make a test bend and grab a set of drill bits. Now that we have the test bend made, the best thing to do is just grab a really big drill bit and take the shank of the drill bit and put it on the inside radius of the bend. I'm gonna look up at the light and the drill bit is so big that there's an air gap between the inside radius and the shank. So what you're gonna do is just keep going down in drill bit size until that air gap is no longer visible. 
I've already done this with our piece, so I know that a 1764 drill bit closes that air gap. Again, I know that because I look up at the light and the air gap is no longer visible. But this is a diameter and we need a radius. So 1764 divided by two is 17128, and that's gonna help us figure out where to place our bend lines on the flat sheet. We know that the height of our new C-channel can be no taller than seven and three-eighths of an inch. We know this because we took a measurement off the truck chassis earlier. But there's a couple things we need to consider to get this right. The first being the thickness of our material. We're just using 3 16 sheet, so we know that each flange is 3 16 of an inch tall. The second thing we need to consider is the height of the bend itself. Now we used a drill bit to figure out what the radius of the bend was, and from that we can figure out what the height is. And now, just using the information we know about this drill bit, I'm gonna show you how to figure out the height of your bend and where to place your bend lines. The diagram I just drew is a blown up version of the bend in this diagram right here. The circle in blue represents the drill bit we use to figure out the radius of the bend. We know that the diameter of the drill bit is 17 over 64, which means the radius is 17 over 128. But what we're really interested in is the height of the bend. And by looking at the diagram, it actually turns out the height of the bend is the same as the radius of the bend at 17 over 128. But what we're interested in is figuring out where our bend line is. So what we actually have to do is take this value and divide it in half. And that will help us locate our bend line. All right, so now I'll actually show you how to lay out some lines on your metal. And remember, the total height of our channel can be no greater than seven and three eighths but half that is three and 11 sixteenths. That's a really important number for what we're about to lay down. We're gonna mark the center line on this piece of metal and make all of our measurements off of that. Using that center line, we need to find our bend line. The total height from the center is three and 11 sixteenths inches, but we need to subtract the thickness of the metal and the height of the bend, which lands us at about three and 7 sixteenths inches for our bend line. Next, we take what we learned and build a replacement chassis for our vintage tow truck. During the break, we built one chassis rail of our back section using the C-channel we made, a straight piece of rectangular tubing, and we added a gusset for some strength. And currently, it's sitting upside down on this table. And there's one thing I wanted to point out. This section is a straight piece of tubing. On a stock truck chassis, there's a kick up to give clearance for the axle as the suspension travels. On a stock truck, at least on ours, it's about nine inches between the axle and the chassis. So by using the straight section, we lose some of that room, but there's still plenty for the suspension to travel. But this is only one half the equation, and we're gonna show you how to build the other half. For the straight section that will go over the axle, we're using a piece of four by two eighth inch wall rectangular tubing, and we're cutting it to 56 inches. This will allow for some overlap when we weld it to our newly made C-channel. Now to determine how much of an overlap, we'll need to pull a measurement on the original chassis. The leaf spring hanger has been cut on the old chassis, so we're gonna add a few inches to avoid doing this with our new setup. With our measurements in hand, we'll adjust our overlap and secure our pieces so they can lay flat against each other. As with any fabrication project, we're gonna tack our pieces first, making sure we're happy with how they sit. Then we can make our straight section of tubing a permanent part of the C-channel. Now that we've attached our rectangular tubing to our C-channel, we need to make some gussets. We're gonna make these out of 3 16 steel and cut them out on the bandsaw. There's one. 
This process is a lot like a puzzle. We'll need to cut one piece at a time to ensure each subsequent piece fits perfectly against one another. Making gussets is not an exact science. This gusset could have been twice the length. I think this length is fine, but there's a few things to keep in mind. Triangles are strong, and you should box things in if you can. We have all of our pieces laid out now, and it's time to weld them up. With our gussets getting their final welds, we'll need to line up our new frame rails so we can build out our cross members. Now these are sized based on the original frame width, minus the thickness of the materials we're working with. For our first cross member, we're using the same 4x2 tubing we've been using throughout the process. We're adding a second one inside of the C-channel, so this will require a different length of tubing. Before we tack this cross member in place, we need to check our measurements to ensure everything is square. 91 and a half. 91 and a half. All it in. There's one last thing we're gonna add before we can call this done. A gusset made from 3 16 steel that will help add some strength around the leaf spring hangers. Holy cats, man, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm done, so I need some help moving it for a test fit. That sounds good. Which way, left or right? Uh, that way. This way. Wait, that's my left is your right, though. Sure. Right. It all comes down to this. All the math, the measuring, cutting and welding, just to get some weld gaps right. Right. Not to mention, you already prepped the chassis, so we know where we're going to weld. It's going to be nice and strong. We don't have giant holes in the frame rails, so it's going to be a whole lot safer. And we just got to pull a quick measurement to make sure that the front and the back are nice and straight before you weld it in. Awesome. <laughs> With our new frame section in place, we'll pull a quick measurement to make sure that the back half of the chassis is straight with the front half. 97 and 3 quarter. Weld it up. The last thing to do is weld this chassis together, making it just as strong, if not stronger, than the original. And this gives us the perfect platform to set the wrecker body back on this truck and one step closer to getting it back on the road. Coming up, how we position four tires and a leaf spring suspension using one helpful measurement. All right, well, the new frame section's in the back of the truck. Jimmy welded it up. It's a lot stronger than it was before, and it's nice and straight. So now all we have to do is get the front and rear leaf spring hangers on, and we have to do shock mounts. Yeah, um, we should probably put all the suspension on the rear axle before we slide it underneath here. Yep, I'll get the leafs and meet you back there. It's good. The new springs that we're installing on the tow truck are definitely heavy duty enough to tow a vehicle. These are nine pack leaf springs with a 3,500 pound rating for each spring pack. And we're installing these reusing the stock U-bolt plates, but we're replacing the U-bolts and nuts and just snugging them up for now. We'll torque these to spec when everything is sitting pretty under our chassis. We'll also loosely install the shackle, which will help us install the axle later. With our axle prepped, we can prepare the front and rear leaf spring hanger mounts for a test fit. We're doing this because we're gonna weld them to our new frame rails instead of riveting or bolting them to the chassis. Many hands make light work when rolling a giant dually axle under a truck. Now we measured the wheelbase prior to cutting off the rear end of the chassis, so we have a good idea where to set this for now. Okay, what do we need? 22 and a half, right? 22 and a half to the center. We're measuring from the cut line to the center bolt hole of the leaf spring hanger. This will ensure that we tack the leaf spring hanger in the same area as our rusted out frame section. Should we 
see if it fits. They're too narrow. I think it's um, these are for a four-wheel drive truck. We've been trying to test fit the leaf springs into the hangers, and we ran into a bit of an issue. And here's what we found. They don't make every part for every vehicle. There's not a bunch of reproduction parts out there for a cab and chassis truck. So we couldn't find a set of front leaf spring hangers for our tow truck. But what we did find was a set of spring hangers for a four-wheel drive three-quarter ton truck. What we did is welded them on, but then we found that there's an issue. This spring hanger is about an inch wider than the cab and chassis spring hangers. So that's just not gonna work for what we have to do. So what we're gonna do is take these back off. We're gonna end up cutting about an inch out of the spring hanger, and then we're just gonna weld them back right to the chassis, because that's what we were gonna do in the first place. With the bracket trimmed down, we'll set these back at the 22 and a half inch mark that we had them at earlier. Go this way. Yeah. Check that out. That's perfect. Awesome. All right, how close are we to the wheelbase on the other side? That's pretty spot on. Nice. 55 and a half, same as the original chassis. Okay, tack around. This actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be and like everything fits pretty well. Yeah, and it was way easier to just rebuild the back half of this than it was to just fix the old part of the chassis. Mm -hmm. But uh, we better get this welded up because we still got to get the box on it. Yeah. Each of the leaf spring hangers are getting welded all along the outside. We're also going to burn in as much of the inside edge as we can get to. This is probably overdoing it, but over-engineering this kind of stuff is always better than the alternative. Up next, we reinstall the towing rig on our patina tow truck. You're watching Carcass. While you guys were on break, we went ahead and took care of the shocks. All we did was whip up a couple brackets and welded them to the chassis. But now, it's time to do a test fit to see how that wrecker body is going to fit on here. And once we have the body on here, we have to figure out how to attach it, whether that be welding it directly to the chassis or making more brackets and bolting it. But uh, we don't have a drive shaft, so I guess we got to push it under there. To mount the wrecker body onto our newly built chassis, we're basically gonna mount it the same way it was before. Because let's face it, I'm sure this wrecker body had been on this truck its entire life, and it held together that long. So in the rear, we're gonna make some basic mounts kinda like they were before, and in the front, we're actually just gonna reuse the mounts like before. But uh, I don't wanna work in this tiny little area, so we're gonna roll the truck back, get rid of these tires, so I can take some measurements. Let's go about nine inches tall, and the plate on the top will be about eight and a half inches long and three and a half inches wide. Now to mount the bed to the chassis, we're gonna be using two existing bolts in the towing assembly. Now essentially, there's two sets of bolts that hold that towing assembly to the bed and then hold the bed to the chassis. Now the original chassis had a piece of angle iron that held this all together. Well, that's not going to work for us because our chassis is about a half of an inch narrower now and there's a big piece of channeling that runs the length of the wrecker body. So if we were to use a simple piece of angle iron, it would just merely contact that piece of channeling. So a simple solution would be to cut out a set of brackets like this that have a notch in it to go around that piece of channeling. Then we'll use a piece of steel, punch out a set of holes that match the holes in the towing assembly.
You wanna hold the bolts for me, Jim? We're bolting the top plate to the bottom of the bed first because we already have the bed sitting where we want it. This will ensure that when we go to weld everything together, the supporting pieces will be located in the correct position. We're gonna wait to finish weld the rear mount so we can make sure the front mounts work like they're supposed to. We're gonna be using the stock mounting plates from the original chassis and some threaded rod to make sure everything lines up. The stock plates just hook to the inside of the C-channel and the threaded rods are fed through them and up through the floor of the bed. All right, I got it. Then they're held down with a few washers and a nut. Well, now that we know everything lines up, we're gonna unbolt everything, pick the bed off of the chassis, weld up our rear mounts, and give everything a nice shiny coat of paint. With everything welded up, we'll slap on a coating of paint to prevent rust and reassemble the rear end of our tow truck. Returning this crumbling work truck to a roadworthy state. We have a lot more in store getting this tow truck back on the road. Follow along with us on this build at PowerNationTV.com.